Today, AMD shows off their master plan for GPUs. We get new RX 10,000 specs, and Nvidia wants to end real frame rates. Welcome everyone to Gamer Mel. Now, before I get to the first story, Intel is having a really big deal event specifically on quite a few of their CPUs, and each one of them also include Battlefield 6 with it as a free game, so quite a bit of really awesome stuff going on here. If you're interested in picking up a new Intel CPU, now's the time to do it. First up, we have the Core Ultra 9 285K. This, of course, comes with eight performance cores and 16 efficiency cores and clocks up to 5.7 gigahertz. And it's not too much off. It's 12% off, about $70, bringing it down to $529.99. But don't worry, because there is a much better deal on the Core Ultra 7, to 65k this bad boy is 36 percent off bringing it down to 259 dollars and once again you get a free game specifically battlefield 6. so if you're interested in any of these definitely make sure to check out the links in the description below those are affiliate links so they don't cost you anything more but it helps the channel out Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, at the new Hot Chips event this year, AMD actually presented some new details on RDNA 4. This is, of course, their newest GPU architecture. It's what makes up the 9070 XT, 9070, 96 XT, all of those GPUs, and they more intricately went over some of these details, and it definitely is very interesting. Specifically, they discussed the modularity of the SOC. As you can see right here, it says the ability to spawn smaller SOCs. On the red line, the bottom portion makes a new SOC. So essentially what they're saying is that they can pull out things, add new stuff very easily to the package, similar to how they do with their Ryzen CPUs. Obviously, those are made up of different individual chiplets. And as I've gone over in the past, one of the really big benefits of this, besides the fact that it's much easier to scale up your designs, as you make chips bigger and bigger, they become exponentially more expensive. Because the bigger they are, the higher chance that you have an issue during production, and you pretty much have to scrap it. Now, don't get me wrong, they don't scrap it that's where binning comes in but of course what that means is if you have a processor that you're selling that uses the full chip that is really really big you obviously can't have any mistakes with that because well if something's damaged you have to bend it to a lower chip but that means you still need the higher end chip and in fact there's actually a point that you reach where the cost in making the chip bigger is just flat too great if you were kind of early on with this you would be thinking well if we can't make transistors much smaller anymore why don't we just make the chips bigger and that's the issue with that. They can really only become so big that it's simply not worth it. So AMD came up with chiplets where they essentially have smaller chiplets that are very easy to produce. And then when they want a really high end chip, they just combine them all together. This obviously helps with pricing. Like I said, it helps with modularity. And obviously AMD is trying to do this with their GPUs as well. And what's interesting about this is that this is something that I've been discussing when it comes to these Moore's Law's dead leaks on RX 10,000. Like I had said, AMD had mentioned that they are moving away from RDNA and cDNA, moving into one overall architecture called uDNA. And according to these leaks, that absolutely looks to be the case, where we see a desktop gaming chip using the same exact chip as the AI chip, the accelerators, all of that. So it's definitely interesting to see AMD discussing this and discussing these moves that they're already making with RDNA 4. Now, unfortunately, while talking about Moore's Law is Dead, it looks like yet another leaker is now talking skews that do look a bit different from his leak. So as you can see right down here, this originally comes from Kepler and he posted these on the Anatech forums. And of course, Kepler specifically on Twitter and wherever he's posting has been a very accurate leaker in the past. So we definitely do want to take these with 
a little bit more than a grain of salt and either way whether it's more saw is dead lake or it's here things are definitely looking up for amd as you can see right here starting things off with the top in rdna5 slash udna die it consists of eight shader arrays with two shader engines each for a total of 16 shader engines and each shader engine contains six compute units so 16 shader engines equals a total of 96 compute units now that really may not sound like a lot especially because when we compare it to Moore's Law is Dead League, we were looking at a whopping 154. But keep in mind that this is still very much impressive because while yes, you might go back at the 7900 XTX and think, yeah, but that one had 96 cores or 96 CUs. But don't forget that the 9070 XT only had 64, yet was very competitive in terms of performance versus the 7900 XTX. And the reason for that was because AMD was able to eke out a ton of extra performance per core, meaning with the same amount of cores, they were able to get a massive amount of performance when compared, this is RDNA 4, when compared to RDNA 3. So given the fact that just 64 compute units was able to get to right around RDNA a 3s GPU with 96 compute units, imagine what not already in a 4, but already in a 5 GPU would do, where they likely up the performance per core yet again with the full 96. Yeah, we really could be talking RTX 5090, maybe even 6090 level of performance here, but it actually goes even further. As you can see here, it says each shader engine has its own RB unit, and these are connected to a SOC block in the middle, which contains the graphics command processor, graphics engine, all of this stuff, and each 32-bit, and this is the part that could be really, really wild, for a max bus size of 512 bit. So this right here, if true, is the same bus width size as NVIDIA's RTX 5090, meaning this is no joke of a GPU. So yes, we are talking fewer cores versus the Moore's Law is Deadly, but we're talking a massive bus width size. Now, moving down the stack, it says we have the 40 CU die, which could contain five CUs per shader engine, and there are eight shader engines in total, arranged in four shader arrays, providing a total of 40 compute units. So obviously this is lower end down in the stack, but once again, given this amount of cores, it really does tell me that AMD likely has up the performance from RDNA 4 to RDNA 5 yet again. Now, we don't have any word whether that actually is the case, but it's just definitely sounding like that given the CU count here. Oh yeah, not only that, but moving back to that higher end chip, we're apparently looking at a potential of up to 128 megabytes of infinity cache. So once again, this is no joke of a GPU. Now, moving on down here, there are six memory controllers. So this one, we're only looking at a 192-bit bus interface. It says this variant could get up to 48 megabytes of total infinity cache. And then finally, we have the entry-level SKUs. This is, and it is saying RDNA 5 slash UDNA. Really not 100% sure how AMD is going to approach this. They did say that they are moving to UDNA, but maybe they still kind of name it something different for gaming. Not really sure. Regardless, this one is either... Uh, goes from 12 CUs to 24. So a little bit of new information there, still not 100% sure which leaker is right. We have seen both leakers very accurate in the past. And at the same time, like I've said multiple times, AMD and NVIDIA for that matter, both of these companies will change things drastically as they get closer and closer to release of their next gen products. So, so maybe one of these are from early on in the design phase, really not sure, but still no matter what, it's definitely looking exciting. And lastly for today, if you hate fake frames, you're really going to hate what NVIDIA has planned for the future of gaming. As you can see right down here, this one also comes from this year's Hot Chips event. Specifically, this one comes from NVIDIA's presentation. And starting things off, let's just kind of get right into it. It says the promise of neural rendering and gaming. And as that sounds, it means exactly what you probably think it means. AI 
rendering. So using artificial intelligence to basically render everything, like 100% of the pixels. You can actually see it. Well, I'll get to that in just a second. So they are talking massive new. This is such a great thing. It'll be so amazing. We'll be able to get so much better performance, smaller footprint, all of that. You can see 10 times amplification and performance footprint design cycle. But then the really big thing that NVIDIA is clearly trying to do up to 100% of pixels are AI generated. Now, I will say that I'm not 100% sure as to how far they would be able to get with this. I mean, obviously this is still quite a ways off, but it's clear that this is Nvidia's ultimate goal. It's what they're really hoping that they can do. And one of the major issues with this, at least in my mind, is the idea of doing it in real time while updating for input. Obviously, NVIDIA will likely try to predict the future with AI, but what happens when you, say, move your mouse and it's not where the AI predicted? The issue, for example, look at DLSS frame generation. What it does to generate those frames is that it has to look at the previous frame to then kind of decipher what it thinks is going to happen because essentially there is no input that happens when frames are being generated because those frames are generated on the previous frame. So because of that, those in-between generated frames are unable to take mouse input. Obviously, what this would mean is that the graphics pipeline would have to be drastically changed to be able to receive input while also generating frames but it's pretty clear that this is the plan for NVIDIA. But of course, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.